Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ori here, and today I'm bringing you guys episode number two of Road to Nuclear. For those of you who don't know what Road to Nuclear is, it is a series that I run on this channel that I'm basically just bringing you guys along for the ride as I try and get my very first nuclear. Now, I'm not a bad player, but I'm also not like that incredible player. Like, I have a pretty good KD in my opinion, and you know, I get good streaks. I go on really nice tears sometimes, but you know, for some reason, the nuclear just has evaded me. I can never seem just to get that one extra kill that I need, or just cycle those kills. Like, I'll be able to go 55 and 5, but, like, you know, every 11 kills I'll actually die. I won't go on that huge tear. And I find a lot of people have this issue. So, without further ado, you guys are going to see me using a KN94 with rapid fire and fast mags. I really think fast mags is actually the most important attachment you run with when you are going for the nuclear. I've just found that fast mags has gotten me out of some really tough situations with who's going to reload faster, who's going to get the next shot on, and fast mag just allows you to do that so much better. Now with that said, rapid fire also is a fantastic weapon attachment to run with the KN44 because the KN44 has a large amount of damage and the rapid fire just allows you to get more damage per second on your target. Also, rapid fire allows you to compete with guns like the VMP, the Vesper, and those close one-on-one -on -one battles where usually the Vesper or the VMP would just completely dominate because of their incredibly fast fire rate. Now, just as important as the attachments are the perks. Recently, I've been using the same perk setup to try and go for this nuclear, and it's been perk 1, I've been running with 6 cents, while at perk 2, I have hardwired and scavenger. I really think scavenger is actually probably the most important, so you can have a gun that you feel comfortable with, and, you know, just always have enough ammo. You never want to get in that bad situation where, hey, you don't know if you're going to have enough ammo to win this gunfight or not. Also, Scavenger will allow you to pick up extra trip mines if you have those equipped on your class. If I was to say any equipment that you should use when going for nuclear is definitely a trip mine just because it allows you to lock down a set path and make you not have to worry about it as much. So Scavenger will allow you to always keep an extra trip mine on you and it actually will allow you to deploy two on the battlefield at a single time so you can actually lock down two lanes if you want to. Now the third and final perk I run with is either Dead Silence or Blast Suppression. I have generally been running with Dead Silence just because when I'm running around I like to try and hear where enemies are coming from. It's been something I've been really working on is not just focusing on my minimap and what I can see but also what I can hear. I think that's a really important part of the game. So Dead Silence allows me to move around the map and listen closer and just know where an enemy could be coming from instead of confusing the sounds with my own player. However, Blast Suppression is a great substitute if you don't have Dead Silence. I unlock Dead Silence as one of my permanent unlocks because I think it's that important, but if you don't, Blast Suppression is also great to use. It will keep you off the minimap and overall just make you a little bit more stealthy. But in my opinion, I still think Dead Silence is just a little bit better because it allows you to hear better and find your targets better. And moving on, as you guys could probably tell, I am running with Active Camel as my specialist. I played around with a few specialists that I was trying to use, either the Purifier or the Hive. But I actually found out when you get a specialist kill, it doesn't count towards your gun streak. So that means I could have 25 kills, but only 15 of them have been with the KN44, which means I'm only at a Ruthless. And unfortunately, guys, I'm going to die right here. This guy pushes me, goes behind the car a little bit, so I overextend, and he gets that little head glitch spot and just shoots right over the car and kills me. I was so mad. I went 19 and 1, or, well, 19 and 0 up until that point. And I thought it was a really good game. I almost got 20. I was so mad. So if you guys have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below. I would really appreciate it. If we get four likes on this video, I will post the next Road to Nuclear right after this. But anyway, guys, if you have any suggestions on how I should play better or are curious on some of my strategies and more in-depth strategies that I have on trying to go for this nuclear, 
then please leave a comment down below. I will get back to you guys as soon as possible. I'm really trying to get on top of my replies, so I'm replying to you guys within an hour or so because I really like the feedback. I really appreciate it, and it just shows a lot of support, and I really appreciate that from you guys. So anyway, guys, I hope we all can get nuclear someday. I bet some of you who are watching have and are like, uh, dude, so easy. But, you know, there's some of you out there who haven't even gotten a ruthless, and... I feel for you guys, it's not as easy as people make it seem on YouTube all the time. But, I hope someday we all can get one. Damn, sounding like Bernie Sanders there. So guys, if you want to see more Road to Nuclear, more Black Ops 3 videos, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe down below to my channel. But anyway guys, I'll see you next time, and take care.